Hi guys, this is going to be the first video that we finally go over the actual content for biology. This is TEK 10C, or the topic is levels of organization. So please make sure you're using your split screen tool and you have the video playing on one section of your screen and your notes on the other because you will be required to be filling in your notes and pause as you need to, go back as you need to, and make sure you turn in your notes when you're done. Okay, so we are going to talk about ecology. It's the scientific study of the interactions between organisms and their environment. So how do different animals and plants interact with each other within an environment? And what are those different levels called? That's what we're going to be talking about this unit. Okay, please make sure that you pause the video at this point so that you can write down your notes. Okay, so first things first, we're going to talk about biotic versus abiotic. We need to make sure that we understand the difference between those two so that you can understand the difference between the levels. Okay, so biotic just means things that are living, like I'm living, you're living, uh, trees are living, and bees and flowers, they're all considered living. Abiotic is considered non-living, so um, water and sunlight and rain and temperature, those would be things that would not be considered living. Okay, so we're going to kind of talk about those. So in your notes, you're going to want to fill out your t-chart that you have here with all of the things that are considered living versus non-living. So let's go through um, a couple of them here. Sunlight. Sunlight is not made of cells. It's not considered living. So sunlight would be under your abiotic category. Sunlight is non-living. Plants are made of cells. Plants do have cells and they're considered living. They grow. And so plants would be biotic. Okay. Insects are living. So they would also be biotic. Temperature is a non-living factor. Okay. Temperature... It can change, however, um, it's considered abiotic or non-living. Fish is uh, considered biotic. Humidity, like the, the moisture in the air, the wetness in the air, that would be considered abiotic. pH is also an abiotic factor. Soil type, um, there's a big controversy as to whether it's biotic or abiotic. If it contains seeds or anything living in it, then it would be considered biotic. But just soil or dirt by itself would be considered abiotic. So we'll put soil type as abiotic. Okay, acid rain is going to be your abiotic. Bacteria are considered living, so that's going to be biotic. Snakes, hawks, and humans, those are all biotic. So make sure you list those under the correct category. Again, pause, go back. If I said those a little bit too fast, you have the luxury of pausing and going back. Okay, so an abiotic factor is a non-living part of an organism's environment. Okay, so what could we say is an example of an abiotic factor? So we could say a rock. A rock is an example of an abiotic factor because it's non-living, right? So a rock is an example of an abiotic factor because it's non-living or it's not alive. Now biotic factors are the living or biological parts of an organism's environment. And um, what, what is something that you can think of that's considered living within an environment? An animal, a tree, you can put anything you want here that's living. So we can say a tree is an example of a biotic factor because it's living or it's alive. Okay, so some biotic factors, we'll kind of look at these pictures here. I may have to extend this into two different videos if it maxes out at 15 minutes, so just bear with me. All right, so here in this picture, we're looking at um, an elephant with maybe some uh, lions, and uh, we have rocks here, we have trees. So let's go ahead and point out all of the things that are considered living in this, um, in this picture. Because again, biotic factors are all the living organisms that live in that area. Okay, so in this picture, the elephant, the lions, the trees, um, those would be considered living. So the plants. There's even bacteria that you can't see there. Okay, um, and then the animals, of course, in the picture. Now in this picture, we have clouds, we have sky, we have trees, 
grass, and water. So in this environment, the living things or the biotic factors would be the trees, the grass, and I mean, of course, there's probably bacteria there. There's probably ants that we can't see. All of those things would be considered the biotic factors. Okay, so here's another example, um, and this is just like your T-chart, so make sure that you filled it out correctly. On the biotic factor side, you should have had hawks, plants, insects, fish, snake, and bacteria. And on the abiotic side, you should have soil type, acid rain, humidity, temperature, pH, and sunlight. So that's just a, another kind of check to make sure that you filled out your T-chart correctly. All right, now we're going to talk about the interactions between the organisms living in, a, in an environment. So all organisms depend on others directly or indirectly for food, shelter, reproduction, or protection. So you will need to make sure you pause the video so that you can write that down on your notes. But um, just like these animals here, um, the birds eat bugs off of this animal, and then the animal gets the bugs taken off of him. So they kind of keep each other healthy by doing that. Same thing here. The um, bee relies on the nectar or the pollen for food. And well, let's just say the nectar for food. And then as the bee is traveling from plant to plant, they have little hairs on their backs that the pollen gets stuck to. And so when they go to a different flower, it then helps that flower pollinate. So it, pollen is typically, is basically the sperm of a plant. So if you're transferring sperm from this plant to another plant, you're helping that plant pollinate or make new plants. So they do rely on each other, even though they may not realize it. Okay, a habitat is a place where organisms live and interact. May be very different from organism to organism or animal to animal. But um, the fish living in a pond, this would be their habitat. The pond would be their habitat. Or the pigeons living in a city. Right, the city would be their habitat. That's where they live, right? My habitat is the city. Um, some other people's habitats are the country. And so it just depends on where they live. Okay, now niche is, some people say it in many different ways. It's just your role or position on earth, right? Or within your environment. So what's your role? My role, I'm a teacher. And so that's my role. I'm a mother. I'm a, you know, what are all your names, right? My, I'm, a, I'm a, a teacher, a mother, a wife, all of those things. So what is your role or position as a human or as a species, right? So bees have their specific roles, so they have a niche. And certain plants, certain animals have their own. So it, it's how it meets its specific needs for food and shelter, how it survives, and where it reproduces. So it's it's their role. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the different levels of organization. And we're gonna talk about organism first. So this may not be the smallest level of organization that we're gonna talk about all year, but it will be the smallest that we're talking about at this point. Okay, so an organism is just an individual living thing. One thing we're talking about. If you're talking about a frog, one frog, that's an organism. If you're talking about one bison, that's an organism. Okay, so one individual living thing. Okay, and you can also, um, it's already written for you here on the notes page, but you will be filling in the other sections. Okay, now we're kind of going up. We're, we're needing more space, more part of the area that they're living in. So now if we look further into it and we see several bison, then we're looking at a population of bisons. So um, a population is just a group of organisms, all of the same species, which can interbreed or have babies together and live in the same area. So if I were to just talk about one bison, that would be an organism. But if I'm looking at a group of bison, that would be a population. Right, and I can't say a group of, of bison and a group of frogs because that wouldn't be a population because frogs and bison can't have babies together. Okay, so this is just a group of the same species living in an area that can all have babies together or interbreed. 
Okay, so again, population is just one, and a, I'm sorry, organism is just one. Don't let me confuse you. Organism is just one, and population is several of the same type. Okay, so you can go ahead and write that as the next level, right? It's just one more level up because we're going from one animal or one organism to several of the same type. So, right, that's bigger on the spectrum, requires more space. Okay, so interactions within a population, um, organisms of the same population must compete with each other for food, shelter, and other resources. So some examples would be like a white-tailed deer. Um, so uh, I don't see that picture here, but maybe some wolves fighting for food or some killer whales fighting for space or food. So it's just um, many animals interact in different ways within their populations, which can make their populations increase or decrease depending on those interactions. And we'll talk more about that. Okay, the next one here, let me move this up, is a community. Let me get that on the screen for you. Okay, a community is made up of interacting populations. So if I were just talking about one bison, that would be an organism. Several bison, that would be a population. But now we're talking about several bison living with several hawks and several snakes and grass, billions of blades of grass, and other types of animals, prairie dogs. Okay, so we're talking about populations living together to form a community. So um, now we've got um, all of the living things, all of the biotic factors that are living together, and those are called a community. So this is where we get from populations that can have babies together to communities that cannot, right? A bison and a hawk cannot have a baby together. They cannot interbreed. They're not the same type of species. So now we're living with different species in a certain area. And at this point, everything in the picture is considered biotic or living. Okay, so moving a little bit further, make sure you write in your community, right? Because we're getting bigger and bigger areas. Okay, so an ecosystem. An ecosystem is made up of interacting populations in a biological community and the community's abiotic factors. Okay, so go ahead and pause it, write your notes for that. Um, the, the difference can be a little tricky here between community and ecosystem, but if you kind of pay attention to what it's asking about, remember, I'm gonna go back through. A bison, one bison would be an organism. Several bison would be a population of bison. Adding several bison with several hawks and several blades of grass and several prairie dogs you're now talking about a community, but all those things I mentioned were living factors. Now the difference between a community and an ecosystem is you're adding in those non-living surroundings. Okay, so you're adding in rocks and air and water. So it's still all the same thing that a community is, all the different types of animals living together. However, it's now including your abiotic factors. It's now including those things that are non-living. Okay, so make sure that you have your ecosystem written here. Okay, and a biosphere um, contains all ecosystems. So if we have an area of living and non-living things here and an area of living and non-living things here, when you put all of those ecosystems together, you create a biosphere. And when I think of biosphere, I think of the earth, right? Putting all of the living parts of earth together, and that's a biosphere. So it's a portion of the earth that is livable. And it goes all the way from the bottoms of the oceans um, to the outer layers of the atmosphere. So everywhere on earth that's considered livable would be a biosphere. Okay, make sure you add that to your notes there. Okay, so here's just some, uh, the definition examples that you have here. Um, just making sure that you kind of understand the difference between those. You can pause it, read those again, and make sure that you understand.